When we view a graph as a simplicial complex, we might quickly observe the following funny situation. And that is, a graph homomorphism is a simplicial map. It has all the right properties. That is, if you map the vertices according to the vertex map of a graph homomorphism, you can get also a simplicial map. But the converse doesn't hold. If you have a simplicial map between graphs, it is not necessarily a graph homomorphism. And the canonical example of what goes wrong, what changes possibly in a simplicial map that makes it no longer a graph homomorphism is the contraction of an edge to a vertex. And that's going to be the subject of today's video. So here is an example of a contraction, a very simple graph here. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to contract one edge. That is, right here, this edge is going to get contracted down to be just this one vertex here. Several other things happen, you'll notice. In fact, there are two edges here which become the same edge here. Now, to realize this as a simplicial map, it's relatively straightforward because both endpoints are just going to map to the same vertex. That's how you contract out an edge and all the other vertices, hopefully, I arrange them spatially so it's clear how they map across. So this is a simple example of a contraction. Um, it's a, in this case, it's what you might call an edge contraction. I'll give a formal definition in a second. But let's start with this idea of edge contraction somewhat informally. If I have a graph G and I have an edge UV, which is an edge in the graph, I might write G and this is a division, this is not set minus, so G uh, contracting the edge UV. And this, the reason for this division is it's supposed to recall other kinds of quotient operations where you have some uh, identification of, of different pieces. So in this case, I'm really taking U and V and I'm identifying them in the new graph. And one way I might think of that uh, as an operation is that I'm kind of removing uh, u and v, and I add a new vertex, which is the, the combined vertex for the pair. Let's call it uv with a circle around it. And then we connect this new vertex uv to the old neighbors, whoever was adjacent to u or v. Or both. So I think intuitively, hopefully this makes sense in pictures. Here was U, here was V. They had some neighbors. There was an edge between them. And I placed them with this new vertex, which has uh, all the neighbors of both of them. And again, if there were in fact two edges coming out of here to the same vertex, I end up with only one edge to that vertex out of my, in my contracted graph. So a pa pairs of edges can be identified in the course of doing this edge contraction, not just this pair of vertices. If I try to write this formally, I might do something like the following. Oh, I wrote my slash backwards it's just after I told you not to do that. G minus uv. Ah, and I even said minus. Terrible. g, <laughs> let's say mod uv, that is contracting uv, is going to be a graph, and the vertex set is, oh, I don't even want to write it. It's something like vg minus the set u and v, union with this new vertex, um, Let's put it like this so it's clear it's one object, it's not an edge. And the edge set is going to be something like, well, it's the edges of G uh, minus any edges incident to U or V. Um, let's see. And then I add in edges 
that go from u or v, um, that is edges that used to go to u or v, I'm going to add them to this new vertex here. So I'm going to have like uv comma w for all uh, uw in e or vw in e. Wow, okay. Frankly, it's kind of a mess. Intuitively, I think it made sense as an operation that you can do. Uh, when you try to write down carefully what exactly happens, it gets a little bit messy. You can try to optimize a little bit by reusing one of these vertices. For instance, you can say, hey, let's only remove one of these vertices and the other vertex becomes the new super vertex. And that's only slightly less um, complicated. Uh, you will see this as a standard definition in textbooks. I'm going to give you a different perspective just in terms of simplicial maps that I think is a little bit better. But at some point, it's almost always useful to be able to go back to the idea of the contraction as happening this way, combinatorially. It's just taking two vertices, removing them, replacing them with this mega vertex, and connecting the new vertex to the old neighbors of U and V. Okay, so keep this in the back of your mind. Sometimes you'll bring it to the front of your mind, but also learn this other uh, perspective that I'm going to show you now, which is in terms of simplicial maps. Okay, and this is going to cover not only the single edge contractions, but in fact a more general class of contractions. So that when it's just one edge, we'll call that an edge contraction, but a contraction more generally is defined as follows. So it's a contraction will be a surjective simplicial map and here I'm, I'm doing it from graphs to graphs, such that for all subgraphs of H, this is a subgraph, so I take any subgraph over here, if that subgraph is connected, then the preimage is also connected. Okay, it's not immediately obvious that this is the same concept that we just saw in terms of contracting single edges, but let's look at an example of like one vertex. In this case, this, this one vertex, uh, its preimage is this entire graph th that I've colored in red here. So it's this whole thing. I'll just draw a little circle around it so it's clear that every vertex and edge in this subgraph maps this one vertex. Now, the single vertex is a connected graph, and so in its preimage in this case is connected. If I took any other subgraph of this graph on the right, its preimage is still connected. So it satisfies the definition this is a contraction. We could realize this simplicial map by a sequence of edge contractions. And in fact, it's pretty clear what those edge contractions would be. All of the edges in this subgraph, if we contracted them one by one by one by one, we would end up with a graph isomorphic to this graph on the right. And that's why we can talk about this entire operation of doing many edge contractions as a single simplicial map. And we're really using the fact that in a simplicial map, you can map multiple vertices. You can map two vertices that are connected by an edge to the same vertex. And it just acts as if we took the edge as a simplex and mapped it to the vertex as a zero dimensional simplex. Now, from this description, you might now see a relationship to our definition of continuity, because you'll see that pre-images of connected subgraphs are connected. Just like with continuous functions, we said pre-images of open sets are open. Well, here we're going to say pre-images of connected subgraphs are connected. We're going to call that a contraction. To distinguish this from other 
simplicial maps, which just point out that not all simplicial maps are contractions. For example, if I took this graph right here on the left and I map the vertices kind of across like this, and let's map this one also to here, you'll notice that this is not a simplicial, this is a simplicial map, but it's not a contraction. It's surjective. Every vertex and edge is the image of something uh, from the domain. However, if I look at, say, this subgraph of just this one vertex, its pre-image is these, this pair of vertices here. So this is two independent vertices. It's not a connected subgraph. So I have a, if I have a pre-image that's not connected, pre-image of a connected subgraph is not connected, then it's not, uh, it's not a contraction. So this is a case of a disconnected pre-image. Now, in this next case, there are examples of simplicial maps from this K3 to this P1 subgraph, which are contractions. There are contraction maps between here. However, there are also simplicial maps that might not be contractions. For example, if I map all three vertices to the same vertex, that is a simplicial map. It maps every vertex and every edge to this one vertex. However, it's not a contraction because it's not surjective. Okay, so these are two examples of simplicial maps that are not contractions because they don't satisfy the two conditions we need, namely being surjective or having pre-images of connected subgraphs being connected. So one important nice fact about these contractions is that if you compose two contractions, you get another contraction. So imagine I have A and B and C are graphs. F and G are contractions. So they're surjective simplicial maps. So surjective simplicial maps, the composition will also be surjective because the composition is the composition of the functions on the vertices and the functions on the simplices. And the composition of functions, or that is the composition of surjective functions is surjective. So G composed F mapping A to C is clearly surjective because F and G are. And now if we take C prime, a subgraph of C and it's a connected subgraph, then because G is a contraction, we know that the pre-image of C prime is connected. Okay, and this is just, again, by definition of what it means to be a contraction and because G is a contraction. It follows then that F minus one here, the pre-image of this subgraph of B is also connected. And here we're just using the fact that F is a contraction. F is a contraction, G inverse of C. Oh, I said it, G inverse. Oh, the pre-image of C prime is connected, so its pre-image under F is also connected. And that now finishes it for us because in fact, G compose F, the pre-image of C prime is just equal to the pre-image of the pre-image of C prime. So we've shown that uh, for any, we picked an arbitrary connected subgraph of C and its pre-image is connected. And 
it's also surjective, and therefore this composition satisfies the definition of a contraction. So this is a way to show that contractions of contractions are contractions, that we can compose them to make more. So let's let G be a subdivision of a graph H. That is, we form G by taking the graph H and splitting some of the edges into paths. The claim here is that if that's the case, if that's how we formed G, then there's a contraction from G to H. It's useful to think of this now as going in the opposite direction as subdivision, right? We took H, we subdivided it to get G, that is subdivision kind of went this way, and now we get a contraction in the other direction. And let me draw a picture just to give you the idea. If we looked at a single edge being, contra or being subdivided, right, let's take this edge and we subdivided it to form this, we get the contraction going this way and the key will be to just, just pick one side or the other to map the new vertex to. Okay, so uh, I'll give you at least the sketch is that you can undo one subdivision with one edge contraction. So if you were to form G by a sequence of subdivisions, you would get a sequence of contractions that you could apply in the opposite order. And now, since we know that the composition of contractions is a contraction, we just compose all those contractions for each of the edge subdivisions. So I will leave the details to you. This is a, a hint now of how we're going to get to the next topic, which is going to relate in a way and generalize our ideas about topological minors. Remember that we started with subdivisions of graphs and then got to this idea of a topological minor. And if you remember, a topological minor of another graph was one where if you took a subgraph of that other graph and then subdivided its edges, or rather the other way around, if you subdivided this graph, you would find it as a subgraph of the other graph. So it's a way for one graph or a certain kind of structure to appear inside the other graph. And now we're going to do that not just with this particular kind of contraction, the kind that undoes a single subdivision, but we're going to do it with m this more general class of contractions. And that's going to give us our introduction to graph minor theory, which is one of the big developments of graph theory in the latter half of the 20th century.